We're studying through the 23rd Psalm. I'd like to welcome you if you're here with us for the first time. We love having visitors and God's meeting us in a beautiful way. I hope you'll be encouraged as well today in the Word of God. If you'll turn to Psalm 23, I preached this Psalm a couple years ago when we were in transition, uh, moving into our new place just down the road from here, and we looked at some of my favorite Psalms for a season together as a church, and Psalm 23 was one of them. And I just kind of preached it in one sermon and did a flyover, and the view was just lovely to kind of fly over it that way. But there's also a beauty in dwelling and letting truth simmer and really lodge into our hearts. And so we've been doing that, and God has been meeting us and blessing us in this psalm of really a sheep's look at the shepherd. I encourage you to, to memorize the psalm. I hope... Uh, some of you are memorizing it. Maybe next week, if there's a little kid here who wants to get up, I'll, I, you can share it with the congregation. I, I just want you to, it's so easy to memorize. We're doing one verse a week, and, and we did two weeks on one verse. So if you can't memorize that, there's something wrong. One, one of my sons uh, told me that he needs outlines and some information and even pictures when I'm preaching, because uh, he says he learns a little better that way. So I have a few pictures for you this morning, and I just want you to consider an early birthday present to my son. And so in review, Psalm 23, this psalm is a call for us to know the shepherd and to be intimate with him and trust him completely in all seasons of life. He's not just a transcendent God. He's an imminent God who has come near to us. Christianity has to move from knowledge about him to knowledge of him from knowing doctrines about him to knowing the God of those doctrines. That's what was just testified of here this morning. Paul said that I may know him. This psalm is an answer to that. So this first picture, I want you just to look at the Lord is my shepherd. And I just don't ever keep meditating on that and growing and deepening and just how much there is that, that God himself is your shepherd. I shall not want I have everything that I need because he's my shepherd. I, I'm in need of nothing, and my understanding is growing daily in this comprehension. If I could just grab hold that God is my shepherd, I, I just don't want. I have everything that I need in him. Next slide, as he makes me lie down in green pastures. And so he, he take, the only way a sheep would lay down is if all their fears were gone. And the Lord has the ability for everything that you're facing here this morning to be able to look to the good shepherd and lie down contented, safe, and peace in the, in the good shepherd's hands and care. The next picture is he leads me beside still waters. And we saw that that the, the good shepherd himself is those still waters. He's the one who, he, if anyone thirsts, let him drink of me. Let him, let him find me to be satisfying to his soul, to be what you've looked for uh, all of your life. Christ is this satisfying uh, place of still water. The next picture that we looked at last week, I love this one. Uh, this is a cast sheep. I, you guys thought I was making that up. This is proof. Uh, he restores my soul. And so a sheep would literally just lay there and die. He would have no ability to get out of that position unless a shepherd came and, and restored him. And so there's these seasons of struggle and, and depression and battles and fights in the Christian life. And the good shepherd comes and he takes a cast sheep and he puts us back on our feet and he restores our soul. Next, he leads me into paths of righteousness. That's the wrong one. No, go, go back to the bucket. Is, my point on that one is that sheep can have problems. And that's the introduction to this morning, is that the good shepherd then also leads us into the shadow of the valley of death. And so our lives are not decreed by God to just be in green pastures. That is not the decree of God. He has promised that that is not how your lives will run. The shepherd will lead us into shadows, and he will lead us into dark places and even dangerous places. And I want you to hear that. The shepherd will lead you into these places. It's not the devil. It's not bad circumstances. God himself, the good shepherd, will lead you into these places to get you up to higher ground. And so no more pictures. You can just take those off. I'll never do that again. Happy birthday. Don't you want higher ground? Don't you want to, 
to be like the sages around this church who have gone to these places and they have a walk with Christ like they have? Don't you want that? I want the glimpses of the face of Christ that they have seen in the shadows. We have a boatload of them right here at this church, and I want that. As I reread Hudson Taylor's biography, who went to China as a missionary, he saw something that I must have. There was, a, there was an intimacy with Christ, living water that that man was drinking that I want, but it was the valleys that he had to walk through, burying a wife, burying children, leaving everything that he had, having no money, no cares, having to come home. He was so sick and go back, and his life was one trial after another, but in those, that man found how to drink living water to know the living Christ. So please hear this. To get to the higher ground, you do not get airlifted up there and just go, wow, this is a really nice place to be. You have to journey with the shepherd to the shadow of the valley of death. As I was listening to Heidi share, I just was sitting there going, the beauty of the maturity of what God has done, but it, she didn't get airlifted to the place she is this morning and what you just heard. That has come through the shadow of the valley. This morning, I think we need to start on our knees then because this is the place where most sheep get cast is in the shadow of the valley. This is the place where many sheep begin to doubt the good shepherd. And this is the place where most sheep spend all of their days trying to avoid it. Yet this is the place when in the psalm, if you remember when we began it, David goes from saying, he leads me to still waters, he restores my soul, he, he, and now there's a shift You'll notice very clearly in verse 4, to thou, to thou, even though I walk through the shadow of the valley of death, you, O oh God, thou are with me. So this is where we move from talking about God like we have for the last three, four weeks to talking to God. This is the place where the shepherd would draw near to his flock like never before. This is the place where we find more of God manifested to our minds and to our hearts. This is where we begin to cry to God. This is where our prayer lives are changed. This is the path, the only path to the place that your heart has longed for and cried for all of your Christian life. This is the place where I want every little lamb this morning to cry out from your hearts, when I travel this path, I will fear no evil because thou art with me. As one of your earthly shepherds, this is where I want to lead you. This is why I preach and exhort and comfort, admonish, pray and counsel that you will make this sweet trek with the shepherd. And the last day when you breathe your last, when you go to that place that I can't come with you anymore, the good shepherd will take your hand and he will lead you safely home where his glory forever you'll share. The beauty of what is laid before us this morning May God meet us, may he meet every soul, and that we will not be afraid of this shadow because I am with you, says the good shepherd. The only true comfort for the valley of the shadow of death is him. So let, let's pray and we will open the word of God this morning. Father, we come before you and we are in a beautiful part of this psalm. And God, this is every one of our lives. We're all going to walk this. And so I just want to pray, Lord, that you'll meet us, that you'll just take away earthly thought. God, let everyone be done thinking about this passing away world and give us a supernatural focus on the Word of God this morning. God, illuminate it to minds and hearts. Let it be understood and comprehended. I, I don't want people to just understand the Hebrew of this verse. I want them to understand the beauty of what you are saying in this verse to us. God, I pray every heart, every heart here would get this and that it would set them free. God, that they would be set free to live without fear and anxiety and all the worries of this life. God, there is a remedy here for every troubled soul. I pray, meet us here by the power of your word through the Holy Spirit of the living God so that Jesus Christ would be put on display as the good shepherd this morning. Amen. Well, today in our psalm, we're going to be looking in verse 4. We are really at the halfway stage for a shepherd. 
or now what we would call the summertime. It's where the shepherd now takes the flock and he begins moving up into the high country to, to the summer range. It's time to go to the hill country because of the heat of summer and how uh, hard that is on the sheep. But on their journey, it is through the mountain meadows uh, that lead the sheep slowly upward. And so this is a special time for the sheep with the shepherd. Now there's this close companionship. There's this solitary care of the good shepherd as they leave home. It's just them and the shepherd camping and moving together. So it's time for the long drive of summer. And the sheep, are they move slowly and they gradually work their way up the mountains. And by late summer, they're usually above timberline at this point. And then early autumn comes and the snow begins to come down and the herd now is led back down to lower elevations. And then as fall passes, the sheep are then driven home to the ranch where they will spend the rest of the winter where I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And so this part of shepherding that's described in verse 4 through 6 is the last half of the psalm. And during this time, the flock now is entirely alone with the shepherd, very intimate. I believe that's why we're moving into the first person now. It's just me and the shepherd. It's beautiful. So what David is writing about in verse 4 is the trek up to the high grounds is through those valleys on the way up. And while this is the most intimate time with the shepherd and the sheep, it's the time that is filled with the most dangers that they would ever face then as sheep. There were flash floods because many of them were in valleys, and there was the threat of just that quick flooding water that would sweep them away. Uh, There was the uh, danger of avalanche as they got higher. There was the danger of rock slides and even an increased danger of predators because they love to hide in those little valleys and jump out in these dangerous places. There were poisonous plants, and there was the danger of quick-moving storms. And so these are very dangerous times for the sheep. And so all the more they need the nearness of the shepherd. Because these sheep, again, I've said it before, they have no defense system for any of the dangers that I just said. They're just sitting ducks or lying lambs or whatever you want to call them. Lamb chops, how's that? (laughs) This is only one way, there is only one way for the sheep to not be afraid at this time. They're the most skittish animal known to man. If they look to themselves, there's absolutely no help for them. They can't help themselves in the valley of the shadow. There's nothing a sheep can do for himself. And looking to a future, oh, I just hope the future will be better. That will do nothing. Buying insurance will comfort none of this. There's only one thing that could keep such a creature calm at this point in their journey, and that is the very near presence of the shepherd, your rod and your staff, They comfort me. And so I pray that you see this, that the shepherd draws near, and this is the only way to help you in this season. Look nowhere else but to the good shepherd for his comfort. This is the only path to get to higher ground. The best route to the top has always been through the valleys. Even the mountain roads here in Colorado, they run through the valleys and they go up to the top of the mountains. So God leads us upward, hear that, through the valleys of our lives. And it seems so hard, and sometimes the suffering seems so purposeless. The wisdom of God is the best way to get you to higher ground. I remember sitting in a hospital in Wyoming and and Heidi saying, why did it have to be so violent? This accident that she just faced and all that she was going through. And I I don't have a great answer for that, but I know this. The answer is, look what it has produced. Look at what God has done in the midst of all of it. The wisdom of God is the best way to get to higher ground. It's better than my own wisdom, my own interpretation of circumstances. I trust in the wisdom of the good shepherd who brings every trial and every path to get you to the higher ground. Another reason that the shepherd would do this, number two, as he would take the valleys because they were the most well-watered route. And in midsummer, that would be very crucial because these sheep would get so thirsty. 
And so this is the place where you will find the most refreshment in him, right in the midst of your difficulty. Every testimony I've ever heard as a pastor is I have drank deeply of Jesus Christ in the valley. And it's in that place where I will find more of him, deeper walk, sweeter communion, all of the fruits that come out only from this place. And the third reason they would go is the valleys had the richest feed and the best forage of any area because they were, they were so well watered. So the choicest meadows are in the valleys and usually steep walled canyons and gulches. And so where we will find the richest feed will be in the shadow of the valleys. So that's the context of shepherding. And that is what David did yearly then with his sheep. He knew this system very well. That is really where he was. Samuel came to anoint him as king, and they said, David is up in the hills keeping watch over the flock. And that's what this season would have been for David. And so what I would like to do now is come and take David's understanding of shepherding and sheep in this season of leading up through the valleys and look at it spiritually. What is God wanting us to learn then as sheep in this verse? The valley throughout... uh, the Bible really is the dark, it was the dark place in biblical metaphors. So we know that David is talking about dangerous and very difficult places. As we look at the text, look with me in verse 4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. In the ancient Hebrew, it can be tricky to translate certain words and phrases because they were just written in syllables without vowels, and the vowels would just have these little markers that would help you determine the words. So if you put the vowels in one way in this this little phrase, the valley of the shadow of death, or if you put the vowels in another way, it's kind of an interpretive call, you could get a, a different meaning. And so we have that really before us this morning. And so we could have, if you put the vowels one way, it would say, even though I walk through the darkest valley, or the other would be, even though I walk through the valley of death, um, you could get both uh, in either translation. In some of your Bibles, I bet it will say different things even this morning. So if it's the darkest valley, it would be those high walls where no sun could come in except at noonday where it come directly down. Uh, you can't see what's ahead of you. And so you, you go into these darkest valleys, and I don't know what God is doing. I don't know what the next step is. But if you point the vowels the other way, it would be the valley of death, the, the worst possible crisis of all. And as I looked, uh, Job thirty-eight seventeen, he said, have the gates of death been revealed to you, or have you seen the gates of deep darkness. And so he's tying this deep darkness with the gates of death. And I think David is referring to the same thing. And so the ancient versions lean the strongest way, the the shadow of death. And so David is saying, I will walk through those dark valleys, even the worst one, where we fear the valley of the shadow of death, and I will fear no evil. David was very acquainted with the valley of death. David was a soldier fighting in many battles we see through the Old Testament. We saw him uh, with Saul trying to kill him. We saw Absalom, his own son, trying to kill him. When he was a shepherd, he would fight bears and lions. This was a man who was acquainted with the shadow of the valley. David knew as a shepherd, during this time, there was great danger. Even the death from a sheep based on a predator of some of those things I've already said. Those sheep would just keep walking and bawing happily. Bah! With all of these dangers ahead, they were not afraid. They were not afraid because their shepherd was with them. And that's my vision for this church is that we would just be these little contented sheep as we're moving through whatever seasons are coming and just not spending all of our days in anxiety and worry because the shepherd is with them. And that is what David is wanting for us. And that is what the good shepherd is wanting for us. The future, this is future stuff that David is writing. This is the things he's saying I won't be afraid of in the future tense. It's the unknown future. So that is the cause of anxiety. 
The longer I live, I believe that mankind is just a big ball of fears. And the future tends to be the biggest fear that most people live in. And and all the anxieties and fears that have you gripped maybe even this morning, it's future. But those are the things that we are worried about. And so most of our fears look toward the future. God doesn't want us to live with the black cloud of the future hanging over us. I've already told you this. I peeked at the back of the book. It's beautiful. I just, we're not, we shouldn't be walking around with the black cloud of the future as Christians. We shouldn't just live with all the dangers that lie ahead. What, what about this or that? What if this happens? What if that happens? What if this happens to my kid? What if this happens to my husband? What if uh, he loses his job? And we just spend all of our times in the scary future of what if, and I'm just always anxious. I'm this little sheep that acts like I don't have a shepherd, and just skittish and worried, and, and anxiety just kind of owns the day. And you, and you just, you, you have no joy in your life because the whole future is just weighing on you all of the time. The fear that has held men in captivity all of their days, according to Hebrews 2. It was a slavery, the fear of death. The greatest fear, the most shadowy thing of all, is there's people who will spend all of their days living in the fear of death. The one most certain that every soul here will have, unless Jesus Christ returns, you will have a death day. And that's the one most ignored and not talked about and fought against in any fear. That is the one, I don't want to deal with it. I can't hear you. That valley that none of us want to walk in with a loved one or a friend or a spouse or a mom or a dad or a child, no one wants to walk into that valley. That valley that has come from Adam and Eve in a garden when they sinned against God and it said that death entered the world and death spread to all men. Now it is a valley for all of us and there's, there's just no getting away from it. Will you let it take all of your days like a thief with the fear of it? Will you fear every day of the dark shadows of the future? But will that really be what dictates your life? Will that be what gets all of your thoughts and all of your anxieties? That's where you spend your days? The writer of that book, I told you where I'm borrowing most of the information, Keller, he shares this beautiful illustration of how to get to higher ground that we can find. And he shares his testimony of the shadow of the valley of death. He said, for two years, I walked through the dark valley of death with my wife, watching her beautiful body destroyed by cancer. He said, their last day on earth, I sat by her bed with her hand in mine, and gently we passed through the shadow of the valley of death. And both of us were quietly aware of Christ's presence. There was no fear, just a going to higher ground. I pray that we know this and we believe it, because I am with you. The one who has said, I'm the resurrection and the life, he who believes in me will live even if he dies, is the one who says, I'm with you. And I wish that meant more to us. The good shepherd is saying, I'm with you. Even though you want to shadow the valley of death, I'll fear no evil because you are with me. That this reality, that is green pastures. That he is with me, that is the still water. He alone restores my soul to him. He leads me into the paths of righteousness. He is with me. He's the Emmanuel. He's the greatest treasure that you have. And that that truth alone can drive out all fear. He is with me. Even in the valley of the shadow of death, I can walk right into that valley because the good shepherd is with me. Amen? You will never walk through these valleys alone. I just can't encourage you more. Will you quit talking about God and start talking to God? Will you look to this remedy this morning? Lift your eyes to the walls and the dangers and the dark shadows, and I want you just to look at your shepherd as you sit here by faith this morning. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me.
The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Amen? I've got it. As I was preparing this sermon on Thursday, I just started thinking about some of the trials that we've been facing as a body. A lady went in for a biopsy for breast cancer, and she went in, and the good shepherd met her in a way, and she said, I was so full of joy, and she shared the gospel with anyone who would listen. Every nurse, everybody, just, why are you so joyful? You're getting a, a biopsy. We've had heart attacks, appendix surgeries, kids uh, battling diseases at very young ages, autoimmune diseases, burying loved ones. And I'm telling you right now, I, I've gotten the same response from every one of you. And every one of you are testifying of the good shepherd and how you're drinking and how he's sufficient and what he's doing. I'm telling you, the kingdom of God has come. This stuff doesn't make sense. If you're an unbeliever this morning, you think I'm crazy. Well, everybody's suffering and all these things going on and they're just getting joyful, more joy, more joy, more of God. You're like, what in the world is that? The Lord is our shepherd. And he's meeting you in the shadows of darkness and death and sickness and trials. He is meeting you. He is shepherding you. He is taking cast sheep and restoring your souls. The shepherd does not leave his sheep at this time. He leads you into it. Do you hear that? He leads you into it. He says, even though I walk through the shadow of the valley, he brings you through it to get you to higher ground. And sometimes he'll bring you to the highest ground called the holiest of holies and to the very presence of God himself in heaven. Praise be to God for his indescribable gift of the good shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ, that he is with us. Don't be afraid of that thing called future. And don't be afraid of the last enemy called death because Jesus Christ has gone into it and he's taken its teeth out. There is no longer, the, the bee has stung, it can not sting again. It has been stung on the Son of God. And he says, do not fear walking into that valley. I'm with you. I want you to listen to this. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I am the fulfillment of this psalm. But he says, it's because I laid down my life for the sheep. Jesus Christ was born in this world, and he was fully God, and he was fully man, and he was born of a virgin. And he came into this world to seek and to save that which was lost, mankind, from the fall of Adam and our sin and our separation from God and the condemnation of God that's upon us. He came to give his life as a ransom for many, to bring us into his sheepfold, the fold of God safe and secure and loved for all of eternity. And to do this, he had to go into the shadow of the valley of death. And actually, it was more than a shadow. He had to go into the very substance, that evil, cursed place called death, the place where the devil held sway and the law had claims of justice upon us. It was worse than ever feared or imagined. And this will be your death without Jesus Christ. This will be your death without Christ. It won't be a shadow. It'll be the undiluted wrath of God for all of eternity if you go into this death without the good shepherd. It'll be like an ocean, wave after wave after wave. The ocean never runs out because you can never appease the wrath of God for your sin. It will come wave after wave forever. And so that, instead, Jesus comes and he hung on a cross and all of his comfort was taken away. He hung in the shadow of the valley of death and his friends and his families and the disciples, they all left him. The crowd jeered him. The devil taunted and abused him and his own father drew the sword of justice and would not give mercy to his own son. And he poured out his sword of justice his full wrath upon his own son. And Jesus Christ had to sit there in that place and bear it all. He received no comfort. Just the substance of the terrors of death and judgment. No one with him. And he suffered on that cross and he died. And his last breath, he said, Tetelestai, which means it is finished. 
I've borne the wrath of God. I, I saw that cup of wrath and I drank every last drop of every drop that your sins deserved. I drained every drop. It's finished so that you'll never have to know what I'm knowing here on this cross. It's finished. Into thy hands I commit my spirit. Well, what was finished? Well, he took away the sting of death. He took away the terrors of it and all of its eternal punishment. He took the full punishment from his Father so that you could now walk into death, people hear this, and it'd only be a shadow. You will never have to experience the separation and aloneness in that moment. Jesus took that. So that at your moment, you could have him. You could have joy and peace and entrance into eternal life with him forever. He will lead you into it. To be ushered through the presence of death by none other than the good shepherd who just happens to be God. I remember I, at seminary, I used to get a preach at this drug rehab, and there was this gentleman in there named Mississippi. And Mississippi used to get up and sing every Sunday. And remember this, Laura? And he would say, take my hand, precious Lord, and lead me home. And that is the beauty of what this psalm is saying. It's just a shadow for the one who repents of his sin and turns to the Lord Jesus Christ and believes in him alone to make death just a shadow, to make your death day your best day, to make death your chariot ride to glory. Better is the day of one's death than the day of one's birth who knows the good shepherd. And so I cry to you, will you believe the word of God that the only way to higher places with God, this communion that's deeper and sweeter, just get this, the only place is through the shadow of the dark places. The shepherd himself leads me into them and in them, he is with me. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I don't need to spend all of my days afraid. I want you to hear that. I don't need to spend all of my days worried about what is coming, what's around the bend, what animals or enemies are lurking, what will happen in my future, what if I end up divorced, what if my kids are killed, the, the, what about all the tough terrain that we have to pass through to get to the green pastures? How do I not fear? And the answer throughout all of Scripture is very simple. I am with you. I, I am your shepherd. You are not alone, for thou art with me. I cannot say enough about what those words mean to me and what they can do for us in every part of the journey, in spring, summer, fall, or winter. Every one of them, thou art with me. I shared last time, I, I heard this story I like about Mrs. Hervey. Mrs. Hervey, her and her husband, they were missionaries to Bombay. And she got very sick and she was dying and Psalm 23 was read to her. And she said this, if this is the dark valley, it's not dark at all. All is bright. Christ bare glory is all that I can see. The shepherd has drawn near to me I am as assured as I have ever been in all of my life. Even though she walked through the shadow of the valley of death, she feared no evil, for he was with her. The joy that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I am content. I have everything that I need. And I just want you to let the good shepherd lead you out of this fear of the future this morning and lead you out of the, the fear of death. And to begin to be, be sheep who just, we, we are going to be led through it right in the very presence because Jesus had to be alone and separate and bear the wrath of God so that now we don't have to. Praise God for a Savior like that. Isn't that unbelievable? I love this gospel. Let's pray. Oh, Father, I thank you for your Son who would leave the very uh, glories of heaven, divest himself, and come to this earth. God, I thank you that he manifested you perfectly, and I thank you that he fulfilled the law. He fulfilled its, its uh, demands, and he fulfilled its uh, consequences, its punishments by being death uh, for us. 
God, I thank you that he went right into the jaws of death. He went into the, to the substance of death. And there he disarmed the devil. He took away all his authority and all power. God, I thank you that he left an aroma at the grave. I thank you that he waits for every one of his sheep to lead safely through the darkest place. God, I thank you that the good shepherd is with us. Lord, by your spirit, would you manifest this truth to every heart? Set every fear free that we walked in with. With that simple statement, the Lord is my shepherd. God, I pray, let every heart just behold this, love it, treasure it, and just begin to walk like those who belong to another kingdom, another, we're citizens of heaven. God, I pray, I thank you uh, for this beautiful psalm that you inspired by your spirit through your servant David. Continue to minister to every heart here at Southside Bible Church. I pray, God, if there's any who have walked in here this morning who don't know Jesus Christ, the good shepherd, all they know is religion, all they know is sin. God, don't let them go into death and, and know the substance of it. For what it did to the very Son of God, it baptized him into a bloody sweat and caused, caused him to cry out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? God, let not one soul in this place stand in that presence without Jesus Christ. Do not let them enter into death and know the substance of it. Oh God, when there is one who already bore it, there's one who in love went and took that full wrath and that full consequence and drained it, took it away and removed it so that they could now enter into death and enter into glory, enter into the sweet place of dwelling with you forever. Oh God, let no soul leave here today without dealing with their soul. God, I, I thank you, and it's in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen.